Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we are doing a walkthrough video on Expand the Expression 6-1 from MathSalamanders.com. Make sure to check out MathSalamanders, awesome math website, tons of great resources available. So let's go ahead and start on this one, though. This is talking about expressions. That means no equal sign, okay? Anytime it's an expression, it means there's no equal sign, and we don't solve them. We simplify them or we can evaluate them, but this one we're trying to see which expressions are equivalent to them by using the distributive property, okay? That's what we're gonna do here and it's multiple choice, so it should be a lot uh, more simple than um, just without multiple choice. So if we look, let's look at the first example. We have two and then parentheses x plus five. It's trying to see which one is equivalent. You'll see the correct answer is 2x plus 10. The most common mistake I see is people doing this with letter A and they choose letter A or something like this, okay? 2x plus seven or 10x, okay? These are all common mistakes I see. How does the answer 2x plus 10 come about? Well, the distributive property, if you think about distributing, that means like distributing cards. You pass it out equally to everything. So we have this two on the outside and we know that if we have something like this, it means multiplication, two times five, 10, okay? But notice how we can't add x plus five. They're two different things. The five doesn't have an x, okay? The five is a constant, the x is a variable. So we can't combine those. So there's nothing to do inside the parentheses as order of operations would suggest. So what we're gonna do instead is we are going to distribute. We can multiply the two by the x, kind of like passing out cards, and then we're also gonna multiply the two times the five. I call this like the rainbow method. You can kind of see we got these little rainbows going on, okay? Or my students like to call it the Skittles method, taste the rainbow. But essentially what we're doing is we are multiplying the two times the x and then also the two times the five separately and keeping the sign the same uh, most of the time, unless it's a, a negative number <laughs> on the inside. So we have two x and then I'm gonna add the two times the five, which is 10, and that's my final answer. I'm gonna select B for the example, and it's already selected. Okay, number one, let's get into it. Same thing here, we're gonna do the three times the A and the three times the one. Okay, so three times the A, keep the sign the same, plus three times the one. Okay, and I know that can be simplified to three A, that's a better way to write three times A, plus three times one is just three, so I need to look for that. It's my first option, so letter A, I'm gonna highlight it. Okay, that's gonna be what I'm gonna do, three A plus three. And that's my option, okay? That's my correct option that I'm gonna select. Let's go to the next one. So we have two times B and then two times the four. So that's gonna give us two times B minus four times the two. That's how it works. So I have equals and that's gonna be two B minus eight. And that's gonna be my final answer. It looks like it is going to be letter C, two B minus eight. Okay, the next one's a good one, and then we're gonna skip around a little bit. We're not gonna do all these problems. That's gonna be a lot of time. So we're gonna do five times the C, then five times the three C. Okay, well, I'm gonna show you two ways, actually, now that I just noticed this. So we have five times the C, and that is five times C, and then we have the three, the five times the three C. I keep the plus sign the same. Five times the three C, that gives me 15 C. I multiply the five times the three, and I just leave the three on there. So you notice how I got, let me change this actually, five times the three C. So that gives me five C plus 15 C. I'll hope that's not an answer, okay? You're gonna say, whoa, that's not, I don't see an option like that. That's because these are like terms, okay? They both have a C on them. So that, that means, or attached to them, that means we can add these two together. We have 5C plus 15C, that's gonna give me 20C. We just add the numbers out in front. Let me change this, here we go. We're just gonna add these numbers out in front, the five and the 15, add together to give me 20, and I just keep the C on there. Just how we did the five times the three, and we just kept the, the C on there. It's kind of similar, okay? So we get 20C as our option. That's gonna be right here, letter D, okay? now. That was a long way to do it. Technically, I could have done this. Because there's only C's on the inside, those are like terms. They both have a C. So we could have added these two together first. So we could have done five times three C plus, C plus three C. Technically, that's a one C, okay? If it doesn't have a number in front, that means it's one. It's an implied one coefficient. And that would have given us four C. Then we have five times four C that gives us 20C. So that's another way to get the same result, but that only works 
if they both have the same variable or number on the inside, okay? So if that was like two plus seven, that'd be an example. But if it's like two plus seven C, can't do that. They both have to have the same letters if you're gonna use that method. Let's jump to number six and then we'll hit a couple more. So number six is this one. We're gonna use distributive property. We have four times 2F, that gives me 8F. I'm gonna keep the minus sign the same. Four times three, that is 12. 8F minus 12 is my answer. So it's the letter B for this one. Okay, let's skip down maybe to one with a couple letters. Um, all right, number 12. Look, there's just L and M. Okay, you can't combine this to make it LM. They're different letters, so you can't combine it, but we can use the distributive property. Two times L, two L, plus two times N, two M. And that's it, that's all there is to it. So we have the two L plus two M, which choice is that? right here, okay? It's none of these other choices, those are bad, okay? But they're often mistaken by students learning this for the first time. Let's do another one, ooh, let's do a half one. The half ones always trip up my students, okay? Let's do both of these. So we have one half times Q. We can just leave that as one half Q, okay? There's nothing else to do with that. You could also uh, write one half Q as Q over two. Divide Q divided by two, that's another way to say that. Okay, that's, the, that's one way. I'm just gonna leave it as one half Q, one half times Q. Then we have to do one half times six. I keep the minus sign the same. Okay, there's a minus, I keep the minus sign the same. One half times six. Well, I could either do one half times six over one, give me six over two, which equals three over one, which equals three, or I could just say to myself, multiplying by one half is the same thing as divided by two. Six divided by two equals three. So let's see which one of these choices right here. Option C, one half Q minus three. Okay, let's take a look at the next one that has a half also. We have one half times two R and then one half times four R. Well, we could do that or look, they both have an R on this in the inside. So I'm gonna go one half, two R plus four R gives me six R. I'm actually gonna do that instead. Then I just multiply the one half times the six. We just did that. That's three and it's gonna be three R. So it's one of these options, three R, letter D. Okay, a couple more, maybe two more. So let's go ahead to, let's go number 19. 19, we're gonna multiply these, distribute. We can't combine those, they're different letters. We have six X minus three Y, and that's it. We need to look for six X minus three Y. Again, it needs to stay minus if it's minus on the inside, and there we go. I don't know why, I've been highlighting it, and then I circled it all of a sudden, I don't know why I did that. There we go, six X minus three Y. Really trying to trip you up with like this one, okay? Be careful. And then last one, we have one half times the 10 and one half times the Z. One half of 10 is five, one half of Z is one half Z. Let's see if that's a choice. It is, it's the first option. We have five minus one half Z. So that's all there is for this video. I know I skipped some questions. If you need help on those, leave a comment with the question number. I'll be happy to help you out. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.